Hey guys, welcome to week number four of our Spiritually Super Summer program. We're so excited that you've joined us for New Life Baptist Children's Church. Be sure to have your Bible ready as we've got an awesome Bible lesson coming up in just a few minutes. We'll continue our missionary story and have some fun songs and even a memory verse for you today. We're excited about it and New Life Baptist Children's Church starts right now. Let's start our service today by singing, This is the day the Lord has made. I say it first and you follow, Miss Kelsey. Here we go. This is the day. This time we can do a little bit better. Instead of just clapping, let's get a little stomp in there, okay? So if you need to stand up, why don't you get on up and let's get those feet to stomping, all right? Here we go. This is the day. This is fun song this week boys and girls you need to have your hands free we're gonna do our Jesus loves me with the beat okay so it's gonna be like this one two clap one two clap you guys remember it all right so here we go we're gonna do four of these and then we'll start our song ready one two three four Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Na 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 na. Woo! Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Woo! Na 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 na. One, two, three, four. Sing about his love. Sing about his love. Sing about it. Sing about his love. Sing about his love. Sing it. Sing about his love, sing about his love, sing about it. Sing about his love, sing about his love, sing it. Na 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 na. Woo! Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Woo! Na 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 na. Hello, beautiful girls and all my handsome fellows. Are you sitting in a nice, comfortable spot ready for our missionary story? Now, you know my first question. Just to review, where does our story take place? It's on my map, big one right in the middle. It takes place in Russia. And do you remember the, um, the boy's name that we're learning about? His name was Pasha. And remember, at the beginning of the story, his family was forced to move away. And while they were traveling to their new home, what happened to the mom and dad? They died. They were sick and they died within two days of each other. So now Pasha and his sister Shura are orphans. And remember for a while they tried to make it on their own, but were they able to uh, stay together on their own? No. Remember they were discovered by a soldier and they were taken, what is this? To an orphanage. And was Shura and Pasha able to stay with each other? No, you see, back then, they would separate the Russian boys and the Russian girls, so Pasha was separated from his sister. But did he stay in that orphanage for very long? No, he didn't. Remember, one night, what did he decide to do? He decided to escape. And a few days later, he was um, discovered by a group of men, and they took him to their village. Now, boys and girls, do you remember what this village was? What were these people? They were thieves, robbers. 
and even murderers too. But remember, Pasha, after a while, he kind of forgot what the Bible says about stealing and about murder. And before long, he was no longer Pasha. What was his name now? Greasy. Remember, they said that because he was nasty, he had dirt and greasy hair and stuff like that. So now he's a 16 year old boy and he's smart. So he's one of the leader of the group. And remember, in this picture, they stole something from these two men. What was that? There were books, and one of them was a New Testament. And remember, sure enough, these two men begged, please, you can take whatever you don't want, but don't kill us. And what did Greasy decide to do? He decided to kill them, boys and girls. So Greasy was not a good person at all. Well, you remember in our third lesson, uh, Greasy, once he got back to the village, he pulled out that Bible and he started reading. And boys and girls, all those lessons that he had learned as a little boy came back to him. And he was remembering how uh, stealing was wrong and murder was wrong. And do you know what he declared the next day? You remember? In front of all of his fellow robbers and thieves, he told them, I can no longer be one of you. I can no longer steal. And at first everyone was shocked. And what did they want to do to that Bible? They wanted to burn it. And Greasy said, no, no, no. And before long, Greasy was able to read the Bible to all of them. And a few of them decided to follow Greasy and to quit being thieves. Do you remember where they decided to go? They knew the Bible says to confess your sins. And they had to confess their sins to the police. And so at our story last week, they went to the police and they, uh, they told on themselves, they, they said, we took this from this person and we killed this person. And they, boys and girls, they told all of their sins that they had done. Well, do you remember what the judges, uh, judge did? He was totally shocked. Never in his life had someone like that admitted to doing something wrong. And he just couldn't get over it. And that night when he went home, he told his wife about these men that confessed all of their sins. And what did his wife say? His wife couldn't believe it either. And then he decided, hey, let's get out the Bible and read it. And that entire night he sat down and he read the Bible. And boys and girls, do you know what he decided the next day? that he would no longer be a judge. From now on, he was going to be a missionary. He was going to be a preacher to his own people and share the gospel. And his wife was shocked. She couldn't believe that he would quit his important job. Well, that's where we're going to pick up our lesson this week. It's finally time for Greasy and his fellow robbers to have their sentence. Would they spend life in prison? Would they be killed? Let's find out. Are you nice and comfortable? Here we go. Well, boys and girls, Greasy stood with his friends in front of a new judge. And do you know who decided to defend them? The judge in our last picture, the one who got saved because of Greasy's influence. He decided to represent them and defend them. Well, sure enough, the judge asked what they had done wrong. And boys and girls, they didn't lie. They told the exact truth. We stole from people. We took their belongings. And then we would sometimes kill them. Well, boys and girls... The judge that was um, saved because of them spoke up and he said, Can you believe that these men actually are telling the truth? Don't you think that we should be lenient on them? That we shouldn't give them the harshest punishment? Well, boys and girls, sure enough, the judge listened to them. And do you know what their punishment was? Ten years of manual labor, which means doing hard stuff like chopping wood and building houses, things like that. Ten years of that. Well, boys and girls, that doesn't sound like an easy punishment at all, does it? But it was a lot easier than what these men deserved. You see, in Russia, they would kill people just like that for, for killing uh, other people. And so Greasy and his friends, they were actually really, 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 really thankful that their punishment was just manual labor. Well, sure enough, the Greasy and his fellow robbers were all separated. Some of them went to this prison. Some of them went over here. But Greasy was able to be with his friend Georgi. Do you remember him? And sure enough, him and Georgi were taken to a new prison. And that's where they started their manual labor. It may have been breaking rocks or moving rocks or chopping wood. For three years, boys and girls, Shura, as he wanted to be called now, and his friend Georgi stood in that prison, and they worked, and they worked. And do you know what else they did? You can tell by this picture. What are they doing? Praying. And not only that, boys and girls, they shared the gospel. They told all the other prisoners about how they were bad men and how they read the Bible 
And by reading the Bible, they discovered that Jesus Christ died for their sins. And they got saved, and oh, how their lives were changed. Well, at first, all the other, uh, all the other men in the prison would laugh at them. Ah, oh, pfft, y'all are just religious kooks, they would call them. But do you know what? Before long, they noticed the difference in Pasha and in Georgi. And before long, some of the prisoners were getting saved. And boys and girls, within three years, the majority of those prisoners, they knew about Jesus Christ. And many of them had memorized parts of the Bible. And not only that, the guards, the prison guards, knew that they could count on Pasha and Georgi and that there was a difference in them. And boys and girls, in fact, some of those men got saved as well. So you see, boys and girls, we can share the gospel no matter where we are, can't we? If they could share the gospel in prison, I think you and I could share the gospel anywhere. Well, boys and girls, they spent three long years in that prison. But do you know what happened at the end of the third year? A law was declared that if a person showed that they had made a true difference, they could be released from prison. And guess who was released? You're right, Pasha and his friend Georgi, because they were so different. They were released because of their good behavior. Well, boys and girls, what do you think Pasha did when he got out of prison? I think he probably ran down to a restaurant and got the biggest cheeseburger he could get, right? And the biggest a load of fries and a sweet tea, something like that. That's what I would do, but that's not what he did. He and his friend Georgi, they decided that they needed to go back to their home where they were born, and they needed to share the gospel with everyone that was around. So that's what they did. Of course, they didn't have any money, so they couldn't get a car. They couldn't ride on a train. They decided to walk. And boys and girls, it was miles and miles and miles away from the prison that they were at. And do you know what they did everywhere they went? They shared the gospel. And everywhere they went, boys and girls, people knew that there was a difference in Shura. There was a difference in Georgi. And many people got saved because of them. Boys and girls, I want to ask you a question. Do people notice a difference in you? Do they know that you're a Christian? That's a very convicting question, isn't it? Well, boys and girls, as they were on their journey, they came upon a village and a beautiful little house right here. And you see, they were really hungry and they decided, you know what, let's go and let's knock on the door and just maybe it'll be some nice people and they'll let us have some food. Well, sure enough, they went and they knocked on that door and a beautiful lady opened the door. Can I help you, she said. Oh, please, they said, we, 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 we're traveling a long way and we're really hungry. Do you mind if we stay here and eat? No, of course not. She welcomed them in and they had two beautiful children and she went and got her husband and introduced them to her husband. And sure enough, she started cooking. Well, boys and girls, while they were there, they started to ask Shura and Georgi some questions. What, what are you doing? What happened to you? Why were you in prison for so long? And sure enough, what do you think they did? They shared the gospel. You're exactly right, boys and girls. They told them all about how they had been thieves and how they read the Bible, and they knew that they could no longer live that lifestyle. They had spent years in prison, and now they were on their way back to share the gospel with more people. Well, boys and girls, as they told their story, all the family's eyes were huge as they were listening. I mean, this was a really cool story. Well, boys and girls, before long, the lady started to cry. And Shura looked over her and he said, ma'am, are you okay? And she just said, this is incredible. This is the greatest story I've ever heard. Well, where are you going now? She asked. Well, Georgi spoke up and he said, we're going back to where we were born. I have a mother who's still there, and I have some family members, and I want to share the gospel with them so they can be saved. That's wonderful, they all thought. And then she looked over at Pasha, and she said, what about you, sir? Where are you going? And boys and girls, he spoke up, and he said, well, I'm going back to my homeland, but I don't have any family left. My mother and my father died when I was eight years old. <gasps> the lady stopped. She had a plate in her hands. And she dropped it right then and there. Well, everyone looked over at the lady. What was wrong, they thought. Something bad happened? Was she sick? Was she about to die? Boys and girls, you're going to have to come back next week to discover what was wrong with the lady.
It's time for a new Bible memory verse for this week. This week's verse comes from Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 37. God's word says there, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Can you read that verse one time with me? Here we go. You ready? Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now we're going to put some motions to this to help you guys memorize this verse this week. We're going to do it like this. You ready? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, we're going to do like that for love, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, we're going to point up, with all thy heart, and we're going to draw a heart. There you go, draw your imaginary heart. Ready? There we go, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. There you go. Can you do that with me? Ready? Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. All right, let's do that one more time. You ready? Be sure to do those motions really big. Here we go. Matthew 22, 37. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Good job, guys. Be sure to practice that verse this week so that you can hide it in your heart. You are about to play Bible Escape Room. You're going to start in a giant mansion, and you must get out of the front door before time runs out. But to do that, you're going to have to unlock several doors. Each door needs the correct answer to a Bible riddle for it to unlock. Are you ready? Let's go! You've got 20 seconds to answer this first riddle. I disobeyed God's one wish and ended up in the belly of a fish. Who am I? I'm Jonah. Great job! You made it to the second door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I took down a giant and everyone said I was brave. But now, my friends and I are hiding in a cave. Who am I? I'm David. Impressive! You made it past the first two riddles. But there's another locked door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I was famous for being strong, but that only lasted while my hair was long. Who am I? I'm Samson. Well done. You're making good progress, but we've got to keep going. Here's another locked door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I prayed when the law said no one could pray, and God kept the hungry lions away. Who am I? Daniel. Wow! You're getting good at this. But can you get past this next door? You've got 20 seconds to escape. I risked my life to ask the king a question. And then I told the king about Haman's deception. Who am I? I'm Esther. Great work. These are getting harder. Can you figure out this next riddle? You've got 20 seconds. I was spending the night chained up in jail when an angel broke me out without even posting bail.
I'm Peter. You're so close. There are only two doors left. Here's the next riddle. You've got 20 seconds. When my son was born, I had to lay him in the hay. Now we celebrate his birthday on Christmas Day. Who am I? I'm Mary. This is it. You've made it to the last door. You're so close. You've got 20 seconds to answer this last riddle and break out. In my father's house, there are many rooms. You can have one because I broke out of the tomb. Who am I? I'm Jesus. Great job! You broke out! You really know your Bible characters. Way to go! All right, boys and girls, it's time to get up on your feet and our fun song this week. I've got Peace Like a River. I've got Love Like the Ocean. And I want you to pretend like you're surfing on this one. And I've got Joy Like a Fountain. Okay, here we go. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean, I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. All three. I've got peace like a river, I got love like the ocean, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got love like the ocean, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. Excellent job, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible lesson. Get your Bible out with me and find the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter number 22 today. Matthew chapter 22. We've been learning together over the last few weeks how to have a spiritually super summer. We hope you've been having an awesome summer with lots of fun, maybe sleeping in or swimming and all those cool things. But we want to also take time this summer to grow in the Lord and make sure that spiritually speaking, we're having a super summer. We want to review our ingredients to having a spiritually super summer. Ingredient number one is the Word of God. You remember when we talked about we need to read the Bible and listen to what God says and obey what He says. We should meditate in His Word and think about it every day. Have you been reading your Bible? If not, you can start today. Ingredient number one is the Word of God. Do you remember what our second ingredient in a spiritually super summer is? Our second ingredient is prayer. God speaks to us through His Word, and we can speak to Him through prayer. Each and every day, we can talk to God. He's never too busy to listen to us. He's never too far away that He can't hear us. So we should pray and talk to God. Have you been praying? If not, you can start today. Last week, we looked at our third ingredient in a spiritually super summer. Do you remember what that ingredient was? It's one that's kind of hard sometimes. Do you remember? It was obedience. Our third ingredient in a spiritually super summer is obedience. Doing what we're told, when we're told, with the right heart attitude. And we learned last week that we should obey God. We should obey our parents or our guardians over us. We should obey our authorities. And that God has a special blessing for those that honor and obey their parents. Well, today we want to look at another ingredient in our spiritually super summer. And this is an awesome ingredient. 
It's one that we have to have not just in our summertime, but in our entire lives, boys and girls, and it's so important. Look at Matthew chapter number 22 with me, and we're going to read some scriptures together. Let's start reading in verse number 35. Verse number 35, if you have your notes, you can look on, and uh, we'll, we'll have those verses for you there. Or you can look on the screen or look in your own Bible if you have one. Look at Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 35. And God's Word says this, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Boys and girls, in the scriptures that we just read, there's a lawyer who comes to Jesus. And he's asking Jesus a question, but really he's trying to trick Jesus and get Jesus to say something wrong. Can you get Jesus to mess up and say something wrong? No, not a chance. Jesus is God. He doesn't mess up or say wrong things. But he comes to Jesus and he asks him a question. He says, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? What is the greatest commandment in all of the scriptures? And Jesus knows exactly what to say. He tells him that the first and great commandment is to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. That's right, just like our memory verse was today. And the second greatest commandment is to love our neighbor as ourself. Well, have you figured it out already? The fourth ingredient in our spiritually super summer is love. L-O-V-E. Love. Boys and girls, if you're going to have a spiritually super summer, in fact, if you're going to have a spiritually super life, you must have love. And I want to talk to you about love today. Number one, when we're talking about love and this ingredient that we have to have in our spiritually super summer, we got to remember that God loves us. If you've got your notes, that's a blank in your notes there for you. God loves us. You know the verse John 3.16? Maybe you've got it memorized and you could say it along with me. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Boys and girls, I love that verse because it tells us that God loves the world. And that word means everybody in the world. He loves you. You say, me, Brother Ethan? I'm just five, six years old. You really think God loves me, boys and girls? I know that He loves you. He loves everyone. In fact, He loves us so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And if we'll ask Him to be our Savior, He will save us from our sins and take us to heaven someday. God loves you. There's another verse in the Bible, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And it tells us that God proved His love to us. This is what that verse says. But God commendeth. That word means He showed or He proved. God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, boys and girls, even before we loved God, even while we were sinners and we didn't deserve it, God still loved us so much that He sent Jesus to die for us. In your spiritually super summer, if you're going to have love in your heart, you have to remember, first of all, God loves you. I heard the story, in fact, I read it one time, about a Christmas play. How many of you guys, have you ever been in a Christmas play before? Maybe you got to play the part of an angel, or you got to play Mary or Joseph, or maybe one of the wise men. You got to wear the crown and the robe and all that cool stuff. Uh, maybe you uh, got to be in one at church or at school, and, and you've been in a play before. Well, there was a, a school that was having a Christmas play, and uh, it was, uh, I think, an elementary class, and, and they were spelling out the word Christmas love, Christmas love. And each kid had a letter they were supposed to, to hold up as they went down the line, and when they came to the letter M, the little girl held up her sign, and everybody started laughing. And I imagine she didn't know why they were laughing, but everybody was laughing at her. And so they went on down the row and they spelled their word, Christmas love. And when they got done, everybody realized that this little girl, she actually, she had it right. You see, instead of holding her M the way that it should be, she had it upside down. And it was a W. 
But instead of spelling Christmas love, it spelled Christ was love. Isn't that a cool story? But boys and girls, it's more than just a story. It's a truth. God loves you no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. God loves you. That's a Bible promise this morning, boys and girls. Boy, look at another truth with me about love. Not only does God love us, but number two, you got your pen ready? We should love God. We should love God. That's what this great commandment was. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy, can you say it with me? With all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Oh, boys and girls, we should love God. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 19 says, We love Him because He first loved us. I don't know about you, but it's easy to love somebody who will love me back. Oh, boys and girls, did you know it's not hard to love God? He loves us. He loves us so much, again, He sent His Son to die for us. Oh, we should love Him. Did you know that in the Old Testament, God told the children of Israel that they should love Him? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, And now, Israel... What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? In other words, what does God want from you but to, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? Oh, boys and girls, God wants us to love Him. How do you show love to God? That's a good question, isn't it? Uh, you say, well, you know, Brother Ethan, I know I should love God, but... But how do I do that? How do I show God that I love Him? Well, I want to give you some ways, boys and girls. I think we can show God we love Him by walking with Him. And we do that by reading His Word and, and meditating and obeying His Word and by praying, by talking to God and allowing Him to talk to us. Oh, when we love somebody, we tell them that. Boys and girls, did you know when you pray, you could tell God that you love Him? I think you should do that. I think He likes hearing that. You know, another way that we can love God is by giving our lives to Him. One day when you get older and you have to decide, okay, what job am I going to have and who am I going to uh, marry and where am I going to live and all these things, if you give your life to God and allow God to make those decisions for you, that is showing God that you love Him. Boys and girls, there's no greater gift that you could give to God than your life. And that's a great way to show Him that you love Him. Another way we could love God is by serving Him. Oh, yeah, serving Him, maybe at church or in your home, and serve Him. We should love God. All right, in our spiritually super summer, we got to have love, and that starts by knowing that God loves us. Can you say that with me, boys and girls? Ready? God loves us. Number two, we should love God. Can you say that with me? We should love God. And number three, how do we have love in our lives in our spiritually super summer? Number three, we should love others. Oh, boys and girls, this is so important. If you're going to have a spiritually super summer, you must love other people. That's what the Bible says. Remember our verse that we looked at just a minute ago? He said, the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You say, Brother Ethan, you mean the, the person that lives next door to me, that neighbor? Oh, boys and girls, that verse just means everyone around us. We are to love other people as ourselves. James chapter 2, verse 8 tells us this. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, that ye do well. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. There's a story in the Bible that gives us a great picture of someone who loved others. There was a man in the Bible, and he was on a trip one day, and he was going from Jerusalem to a city called Jericho. And as he was going on his way, there were some thieves, some robbers who beat him up and took his things, and they left him for, to die and, and went on their way. And after a while, there came by a man who was a priest. He was kind of like a, a preacher in our day today uh, in, the, in the Israelites' uh, uh, religion there, in the Jewish religion. And the priest came by, and he saw this man and how he was beat up and bleeding, and he was in a bad way. But do you think the priest stopped to help him? Boys and girls, he did not. In fact, the Bible says he just walked by on the other side of the road. 
Bible gives us the idea that he may not have even gone over to check on this young man or to ask him or see if he was even alive. He just walked by on the other side of the road. A little while later, there came a man who was of the tribe of Levi. He was a Levite. And they, they were uh, the tribe that the priests came from. And, and this man came over, and the Bible says that he kind of looked at this man that was beaten up, but then he too walked by on the other side of the road. A little while later, there came a man who was a Samaritan. Boys and girls, the Samaritans and the Jewish people, they did not get along very well. But this Samaritan man, he saw this Jewish man and how he was beat up and he was hurting and he was maybe going to die if nobody did anything for him. And the Bible says that he had compassion on him. Oh, boys and girls, that word compassion, do you know what it means? Well, there's a preacher who says it this way, Compassion is your hurt in my heart. Compassion is your hurt in my heart. And this Samaritan saw this Jewish man and how he was hurting. And he felt that hurt in his own heart and had compassion on him. And boys and girls, he took him and he tried to help him where he was cut and bruised and bleeding and, and tried to uh, patch his wounds up a little bit. And he, he took him to an inn or a, a place where he could stay and he could recover and get better. And in fact, boys and girls, he went so far to show love to this man that he even paid for all that he needed while he was staying in this inn. Do you think that Samaritan showed love? Oh, boys and girls, he showed amazing love. And in fact, he showed God's love to this Jewish man, didn't he? Boys and girls, it is sometimes very hard, isn't it? But did you know that because God loves us and we love Him, we should love other people? You know that means our brothers and sisters? It means our mom and dad? It means that person at school that sometimes gets on our nerves? It means people at church, when you're here, it means everybody. We should love others. What are some ways do you think that you could show love to other people this week? Maybe to your brother or sister? You know what? In your notes there, maybe we gave you some blanks. And if not, maybe you could turn it over on the back and write some ways this week that you could show love. And then why don't you come back to this paper in a few days and see, hey, did I do that this week and did I do that? Have I been loving to my brother and sister? Have I showed God's love to others around me? Boys and girls, if you're going to have a spiritually super summer, you have to have love in your heart. You have to show love to others. It starts by realizing that God loves us. Can you say that with me one more time? God loves us. Number two, we should love God. Can you say that one with me? We should love God. And number three, we should love others. Can you say that with me? We should love others. This week, if you're going to have a spiritually super summer, you need the Word of God, you need prayer, you need obedience, and you need love. Boys and girls, God loves you. We can love Him, and we can love others, and we can have a spiritually super summer. Let's pray together. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you that your word tells us and commands us that we should love you and we should love others. And Father, it's hard sometimes to love other people. God, sometimes even in our selfishness, it's hard to love you the way that we should. So I pray that for the boys and girls listening, maybe even there's some adults listening, God, if they have never experienced your love in their lives, they have never asked you to be their savior, and they don't know for sure if they died today that they would go to heaven. I pray that today, maybe even right now, they would call out to you in prayer and place their faith and trust in you and ask you to save them, Lord, because you want to do that. Help us to love you. Help us to love others this week. God, may we be loving towards our brothers and sisters, towards our parents or our guardians, Lord, towards uh, other friends that are all around us. Lord, may we show the love of God to others. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for a great a service of Children's Church. May we really keep growing and learning. And We pray all this in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, boys and girls. We want you to have a spiritually super summer. and You've got to stay in God's word to do that. We want to encourage you to join us next week for another episode of New Life Baptist Children's Church. If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call at the number below or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook or on our teen Instagram for upcoming events here at church. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time on New Life Baptist Children's Church.